Jean-Francois joins me now. And Jean-Francois, you know, it's been a while since I talked about uranium and in particular, uranium city. Uh, and uh, funny enough, I had a dad that was involved in that area overall. Uh, talk to me about the Athabasca Basin as well. How are uranium prices right now and how is development in that area? First, um, Athabasca Basin is the most prolific ground in the world for uranium. The Athabasca Basin produce each year, 20, 25% of world supply as, as uranium. It's in Canada, so as a jurisdiction cannot be better. Um, so we, we are a big uranium producer worldwide. Uh, then as to uranium city and the uranium prices have been constantly climbing over the last year, uh, over a demand that is generated by significant amount, an unseen amount of nuclear power plants being commissioned. Uh, I think we have about 60 in the world right now being commissioned uh, over a number of global 400. So it is a monster in proportion compared to uh, what we had over the last decades. That generates decades of demand for uranium that was not there. This is why prices are are keeping up, and I think we have a good 20 years ahead of us. Okay, so let's talk about some of your projects, uh, which I find fascinating, in particular, uh, the Laredo mine. As I recall, it operated between 1957 and 1960. I take it you're bringing it back, but how does that inform your project there? Well, we just acquired around Uranium City, the Beaver Lodge camp, six projects with Eagle Plains. Um, and uh, out of those six projects, four projects were past producer. And Laredo was one of them, produced for about a good decade. Uh, and yes, it is our, in our intention to expand the historical data we have. And the best place to find a mine is in the shadow of a mine. So we all know that. So the historical production there was fairly shallow. There are extensive mine plans, uh, record at the Saskatchewan Minister of Mine, Department of Mines. And I mean, it's a very prospective area. We just finished compilation. We're gonna enter our summer exploration program. Then the drill will be to, to start the drilling program and delineate the resource and get into further details into engineering if uh, we're all successful in those in those steps. And that'll all happen in 2024? 2024 will be a big year, uh, but no, it's going to take, at least drilling will happen, right? We're preparing ourselves for drilling uh, with our technical team. So yes, it is in the plans to drill. Uh, we have a lot of targets. We see an immense opportunity there because the, the biggest highlight is the Beaver Lodge camp has been dormant for 40 years, I'd say. Mm. So you have an historical past producer that produced 70 million pounds of uranium, which is substantial, and then put away on the shelf for 40 years. Um, we're going back with a lot of enthusiasm uh, to explore, develop, and transact over that ground. Uh, Don Lake is another property that you're working on. Where are you in the timeline for that? It's since all projects are very close, it's going to follow the same kind of. They're they're all within twenty kilometers of uh, of of distance. Um, every project will will get a systematic approach of exploration and development until we find the hidden gem. And we say, well, this is the zero in on. We want to focus on this because this is a world class asset. And then you might have to take decisions on the other ground. Do you want to sell, find a partner because your focus is on a specific one? And we never know how Mother, Mother Nature yield these properties in, in front of the, each other. As I say, there's four that produce out of six. 
That's not because the two others didn't produce. They're not good, actually. Don Lake didn't produce much, and there's already a resource. So it didn't produce, but there's already a resource there. So there's an evidence that there's uranium mineralization. So it has a very compelling twist, even if it didn't produce. So we can discard that one. Is Beaver River the same kind of an idea? It is the same kind of idea, never produce. But right at surface, we have all the perfect geology, EM conductors, trace for over 600 meters, series of trenches that went across that conductors, that conductor and uh, yield up to 36%. Not just a one-off. There is plenty of 29%, 30%, 18%, 36%. Those are outstanding numbers that really excites our team to go and revisit those numbers right at surface. So our thesis is the Beaver Lodge camp has been explored very on a shallow crust. All the records we're getting were, are within 12 meters down to 70 meters in majority. Never exploration with modern techniques, push holes uh, for discovery in the magnitude of 300 and further, 300 meters vertical and further. Uh, and we all know, if you look at the Athabasca Basin geology, Cigar Lake, MacArthur River, Millennium, and, and and the other ones, they all happen very shallow, uh, and much deeper in the 350 to 700 meter horizon. So we believe Beaver Lodge District saw the strings, the pearls, but not the big gem at the bottom. So let's say the mothership. Okay, so if I'm an investor in Excite, I might not necessarily see the results in the next couple of weeks or couple of months. But say by the end of the summer? Yeah, by the end of the summer, you'll see, you know, the turnaround with the geologists and the field crews and then set up. So all along the year, you should see results from us. Uh, but th there are some time spans. Sometimes you need to, to put ahead. But we still have a number of press release to come out with from our winter compilation. And then after a summer campaign comes in, there might be a slight crossover of data and then after the drilling and you'll have results all the way through next year. Jean-Francois, thanks so much for your time today. Perfect, thanks.